All right, boys, this has been a long time coming. We're going to talk about Amiga games. Now, what the hell is an Amiga? Short answer, a short-lived computer from the 80s. Long answer, <gasps> the Amiga was Commodore's attempt at making the most powerful computer ever made. It could do better the graphics, better sound, and was faster than its rivals. The Mac, Atari ST, Commodore's own 64, and even the early PCs at the time. Okay, I'll stop now. They launched it around 1985, and for years, they sold less than the amount of words that were in Kiefer Sutherland's MGS5 script. Why? Because they marketed it like crap with those weird commercials that made no sense. Oh wow, this computer has a funky fetus. Take all my money and fuck me dry. They would too. They were $1,300 at launch. That's over $3,300 in 2021 money or 2.61080 Ti. As of this recording. When it first came out, there was hardly any software or games available for it because nobody freaking cared about this thing. It was expensive. Everything was proprietary to it. The only thing the first Amiga had going for it was, hey, the two games for it are pretty and it can rate Trace. 1985, ray tracing. My GPU from 2012 can't do ray tracing. It don't do nothing but spin its little fans, the little bitch. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In 1987, Amiga released the 500, the much better, way cheaper version of the old Amiga. And guess what? It actually sold a few hundred thousand. And there was tons of software. It had a video editor called Video Toaster. Please, somebody make a YouTube poop with it. The 500 was a big upgrade from the old C64. Hell, it made it look like a kid's toy. It had a way faster floppy drive built into it, and the OS had an actual GUI with windows and icons and everything. You know, like a computer, holy crap. And instead of a built-in synthesizer like the C64, the Amiga used audio samples like a Super Nintendo, so you can make your instruments anything you wanted, like farts. <laughs> Of course, if you really want fart music, you could just listen to a Sega Genesis. Anyway, when the 500 came out, that's when the games started pouring in. There were so many games made for the Amiga, no one has a real official number. Wikipedia says 2198, but the real number could be somewhere near 5,000. I could dedicate the rest of my life to reviewing Amiga games and still never review them all. So here's just a few I gathered up that I thought looked interesting and some that are considered the best Amiga has to offer. God, I hope these games don't suck as bad as the C64 one. The first one we're gonna look at is called Savage. Savage! 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 Oh, that music is so cheesy. I love it. So it's a platformer, and you throw an unlimited amount of axes at your enemies. And the thing I noticed right off the bat is the enemies respawn a lot, and there's tons of them. And the arc on your weapon seems to go over them a lot, so you keep having to duck down just to hit them. Oh, check out this guy. He's just one static sprite jumping up and down. The first part of the stage is pretty easy. It's the second part where they actually start throwing shit at you. You got rocks falling down, you got Donkey Kong barrels, and you still got your standard enemies. The enemies aren't really what kills me because the game gives out a bunch of life potions. It's this particular spot right here that I can't seem to get past. What's bad is there's enemies spawning the whole time you're trying to do this very careful platforming. So you just gotta pretty much take the hits while you're doing it because you really need to concentrate. It sucks because I really wanted to like this game because I like the music. But I wouldn't say the game is bad. It's just hard. Surf Ninjas. That is a name and that is a title screen. This can't be genuine. It's gotta be a joke. This looks like one of those PS1 texture games you'd see on Itch.io. Well, it gives what it promises. There's the surf and there's the ninja. So this is either a beat-em-up or a ballet dancing simulator. One of the two. Look how graceful this jump kick is. Yeah, trample him. Kick him while he's down. I need to wax the board. Is that what they're calling it now? What the fuck? What is he even doing? Oh, for fuck's sake, I cannot hit anybody with this stick for some reason. For real, the whole time I had this weapon, I did not hit anybody, not once. Holy fuck, I ripped his guts out. And he gets back up like nothing happened. Wow. Don't fuck with a surf ninja. This one's still my favorite. I just love that noise. Oh, if you hold the button down, you can just keep doing it. Yeah, he ain't walking that off, but the guy getting his spleen ripped out, nah, that's fine. Have you noticed I haven't really told you what you're supposed to do in this game? Because I 
don't know. I think you're supposed to give the items on the ground to a couple of different people, but I haven't figured out who to give them to. But it's okay, because this is considered one of the shittiest games on the Amiga, and I can see that. Next. Now, I can't make a video about the Amiga without talking about Shadow of the Beast. This was a visually impressive game back in the day. This game was straight up doing things that hadn't been done yet, like parallax scrolling, and honestly looks like a Super Nintendo game, even though the SNES was still a year away. This game coming out in 89, and the SNES coming out in 1990. But is this game any good? Well, for one thing, your character is a boulder-punching asshole. You get one life, no continues, and the whole game is open for you to explore with no clues on where you're supposed to go. It's like doing surgery blindfolded while high. This hit detection is completely unfair. I have to get right up to this grasshopper thing before I can hit him, and he hits me first. And how many of them do you need? Oh my god. This enemy has a lot of frames of animation before it swings its sword, so the idea is you punch him before he swings. Thing is, you have to know how close you have to be before you can do that. Wouldn't be so bad if his arms weren't so short he has to check off hands free. So according to the walkthrough, I have to get this blue orb thing, and the way you get it is you crouch down, wait until the fire goes out, and punch it. You only have just enough time to punch it once every time it spits the fire. So you're gonna have to crouch, punch, crouch, punch. Damn, this game is more tedious than having to find a place to bury your neighbor's dog after you shot it for tearing up your mail, some bitch. Then you have to beat this boss that rocks back and forth, but it seems like your punches don't do anything. And if it touches you, instant death start the whole game over. Well, guess what? That orb we picked up earlier, that's a power up, but it only works if you have full health. But now the boss is easier to kill. But guess what? Once you beat him, it takes the power up away from you. Why? God forbid I have something in this game that makes it a little easier. I already had to put an infinite life cheat code in, and boy did I need it. Look at this. Look at how many enemies there are. Look at this shit. And now there's spikes coming out of the ceiling. They expect you to beat this game in one life? Who made this game? Reflections? You mean like Driver? Actually, that explains a lot. Driver 1 and 2 are balls hard. The people behind Driver made an impossible to beat platformer. That makes a lot of sense. Anyway, typical torture simulator. Let's move on. This one is called Space Hulk, and it's a mech shooter where you control five different mechs at once. Why? I don't know. It's like they had the idea to make it multiplayer and change their mind or something. Anyway, ain't much to say. You shoot the monsters and head to the goal, and the monsters seem to one-hit kill you, so that might be why they give you multiple mechs. Why not just give me one mech with hit points? That's like if you you had control of every life you had in Mario at once instead of just having the live system. Why even do this? The mechs are all the same. They shoot the same. They work the same. Everything. I don't get it, Big Dan. Cannon fodder, and I already like this one because it has a theme song. Now, Cannon Fodder is a top-down shooter with mouse aiming, and the game gives you different missions to complete, ranging from kill this to blow up that. You can control all your soldiers at once or split them into teams. Instead of lives, you get a bunch of soldiers, and every time you lose some soldiers, their graves pop up on this hill. It does make you wonder just how many graves can be put on this hill. And would you believe it, you can actually save your game in this one. Something we take for granted now, but was very rare back then. What's really funny about this game is how many times you could shoot people after they've already died. Wait, what? What happened? Apparently a piece of debris from that building shot up and exploded in front of my soldiers. I just happened to be standing in just the correct place. This one's okay, I guess. Uh, I ain't really got nothing funny to say about it other than, well, it's still better than anything the Army Men series ever put out. That might be foreshadowing, by the way. Sensible soccer. Now, what's so sensible about soccer? Excuse me for not knowing my geography, but what is this flag? Damn, it sure gives you a lot of teams to choose from. The gang's all here, boys. Let's do the little Norwegians versus Berkele. Ooh, this is a sports game, all right. I already don't know what I'm doing or which one of these characters I am. Which one of these is Norway? Well, he's gonna kick it in, but wait. Oh no, here it comes. It's going the other way. It's, it's gonna hit it in the- no! 
Choose a team to edit. Wait, hold the fuck up. You can make your own custom teams? No, don't give me this power. Let's see. I'm running out of names here. Uh, Genius Kajumbo. Norman Reedus. Funky Fetus. Oh, what's the Snatcher guy's name? Uh, oh, fuck it. John Snatcher. Master Miller and, uh... David Bowie. All right, Team Foxhound, baby. Let's see, we're working, man. Who should I put? Oh, I can put my patrons. Oh, I wish I could fit all of you. I love you guys. And Bustin, 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 Bustin. Oh, God, I'm having more fun with this than I am with the game. Let's make a furry team. A first response. <laughs> you know, I have to shoehorn Dixie in there somewhere, so. Let's see, Doug Winger. Yeah, Google that if you want to go on an adventure. Tech Works, he needs in there, too. Bugs Bunny in drag. <laughs> And I'm satisfied. Before I was done, I had made a Mogus and Deltarune, too. I did find out how to play the game. It turns out I had to set the team to player. So, my goof. Deltarune versus a Mogus, the match of the century. Spammed it as 700 Chromer betting on a Mogus losing. So back to the game. The player character you control depends on who's closest to the ball, from what I can tell. Pretty simple game. You use the button to kick, you use the stick to move. And that AI is pretty damn unforgiving, too. Toby Fox is handing me my ass on a plate. Even though I know nothing about soccer, I learned how to play it pretty damn quick. And you know, for a sports game, it's not that bad. I could see somebody who's into soccer spending a lot of time on this game. This actually makes me want to try Mario Strikers. Super Frog. Okay, I have to mention this one. Because look at this intro and tell me if you recognize this animation. Super Frog. This intro was made by none other than Eric Schwartz himself, the guy behind those really horny Amiga animations, including those Sabrina ones I used to spam in my old YouTube poops. We've come full circle, boys. Oh look, his feet do that spinning thing. And one of the enemies kind of resembles a hedgehog. Now all it needs is a poorly made HD remake with terrible reviews. Ooh. Oh. Yep, that's a mascot platformer, all right. It's a shame because this game doesn't seem that bad. You can jump on enemies, you can shoot enemies, you can find hidden secrets, collect coins, and get to the goal. The maps aren't too awful confusing, and the graphics and music are pretty decent for 93. But by 1993, the Amiga was already dead, and the PC had won the computer war. Luckily, this did get converted to MS-DOS in 94, and then later got a GOG release on Windows. Unfortunately, when the HD version got reviewed, bombed, the developers removed it and the original version from GOG. Assholes. By the way, these are the same people that published Ukulele. Take that how you will. Damn, the story of this game's more interesting than the game itself. It's just a simple mascot platformer. Thank God there weren't no more of the- Oh, damn. There is no mascot, only Zool. Oh! Oh, oh, that is ugly. Oh my God. This is the ugliest game I've ever seen. Look at how busy this is. And what is that noise? Yeah, great soundtrack, bro. You know, when my dad used to hear somebody complain, he would say, I would rather listen to a frog fart in a glass. I think this is what it would sound like. I mean, to be fair, the game runs fine and it plays okay. It's just not fun to look at. You know when somebody's really ugly, but they're a really nice and friendly person, so you really don't have anything bad to say about them? This is that. I can't even bring myself to enjoy the game because it just, it hurts my eyes to look at. If they didn't do nothing but get rid of the shit in the background, it would look a little better. This is like what happens when a wannabe graphic designer gets their first clip art CD. Use all the PS. NGs. It actually hurts the gameplay because I can't see some of the enemies. There's one down here that shoots projectiles and I can't see them through the sea of bullshit in the background. Oh, fuck! For a minute, I thought he was laying on the floor bleeding out, but no, he's just jumping. One more thing before we leave this game, Zool looks like a gimp. Now, here's a story I want to bring up. In the 90s, after the Amiga started getting old, several Amiga games ended up getting ported to the Sega Genesis. Sega welcomed Amiga 
Sega devs with open arms, and EA, who had a strong relationship with Sega at the time, helped port many Amiga games to the Genesis. Trip Hawkins, the founder of EA, who we talked about in the Army Men review, probably wanted to see all these small computer game devs get more exposure from the console market, as he was big into the small underdog dev teams. You'll know an EA published game from that yellow tab on the cart. Well, one of those games was Lotus 2 Rex, which I had as a kid. I wouldn't find out till many years later that this game was Lotus 3, the ultimate challenge on the Amiga. And I have to say, after playing both versions, the Genesis is a near perfect port, although the music isn't near as good. I mean, damn, listen to the Amiga music. see this game is very much in the style of outrun or pole position you can do an arcade style race against the timer or you can do a championship and try to get in first place it gives you a lot of different environments to race through and a plethora of different tracks what's special about this game is every single track you play on is different the game has a proprietary track generator called the rex system and you can even use it to make your own tracks and you get a password with each one you make so you can save your tracks this was pretty ambitious for the time. The Genesis version had the rec system too, and I remember having lots of fun generating tracks. I have always appreciated the pseudo 3D effect in this game and other games like it. These are some of my favorite 2D racing games. Mario Kart and F-Zero can suck it. If this game was meant to sell more Lotus cars, it's working on me. When I win the lottery, first thing I'm gonna do is buy a Lotus and get a million speeding tickets from listening to these sick Amiga beats. Star Glider 2 by Argonaut Software, the same people that made the super effects chip for Star Fox. Oh, this is, oh, this, this is like if Star Fox was bad. Guys, I have no clue what I'm doing. This must be one of those games where if you don't have the manual, you can't play the game. Because what is this? What is that? What is anything? My God. Oh, hey, I blew something up. We're halfway there. Funny red guy. I want the funny red guy. What happens if I go up? Like way, way up. Oh, okay. The frame rate gets better. This game is uh, heavily optimized for Amiga hardware. I joke, but they actually did make GPUs for the Amiga. And you can still buy some of them brand new and nobody is scalping them. I mean, how much Ethereum are you going to mine with a 50 megahertz GPU? You'd be wasting more on your electric bill than you made. Oh, I forgot we had a game play in here. Uh, game sucks. Let's move on. Virus. Oh. Okay. Okay, you guys have to see what this game looked like in my folder. Yeah, that don't look suspicious at all. Ah, not another one of these. I spent most of my gameplay trying to figure out how you control the ship. You're not gonna believe what the controls are. You use the slash key to actually move the ship, and A and Z controls how fast you go in that direction. And then you use greater than and less than to go left or right. You know what? I've got a better control scheme. It's called the arrow keys. W A S. SD wasn't invented yet, but dude, the arrow keys were right there. I haven't even talked about the game. I mean, look at it. Unity Asset Slender Games ain't this dark. How are you supposed to know where you're even going? It's like driving with no headlights. I would know I've done it and I only wrecked once. I haven't even figured out what I'm supposed to do and at this point, I don't care. But I can say I downloaded a virus for this video. Hunter by Activision. Oh boy, there's a company that went down the shitter. You must collect one general General's head. Holy shit. What if I just give you the whole general and you cut the head off? I don't feel like getting my hands bloody. Oh, mama, it's another one of these. Might be the ugliest one yet. Yeah, I'm totally seeing what those groundbreaking Amiga graphics were all about. Okay, I have no idea what to do. I feel like I pressed every button on the keyboard. Ooh, ooh, I did something. Ooh, I did a different thing. What did that do? I, oh, I mean, uh, uh oh, okay. Oh, awesome, man. Yeah, freaking, yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, I'm good. Turrican. Okay, this title screen is awesome, but it's missing something. There we go. Ah, hit me with.
of that good music again. Turrican is what happens when somebody says, okay, what if we take all these cool weapons that would work perfectly in a space shooter, but put them in a platformer? That's John Turrican. There's several different guns, and they can be upgraded by getting power-ups. You need them, though, because this game is balls hard. It's one of those games like Mega Man where it gives you a whole bunch of health, but you need it because you're going to get hit constantly. And you don't have any post-hit invincibility, so one enemy can just completely drain you. The game gives you like this wand of death that's really cool. You can just stand in one spot and eviscerate everything around you. The one thing that makes this game hard to love though is the maps are poo-poo. There's this one spot at this waterfall where you can get stuck at and you can't jump on the other platforms because the platform is just right to be wrong. It's too high to jump on, it's too low to jump to the platform beside it because you hit your head on it, and you can't jump to the platform on the left because there's a rock in the way. All you can do is run out your lives. And then there's these platforms that are stacked right on top of each other so it's hard to jump on them. Whoever made this part, you can fuck off right to hell. I've actually run my lives out on this one spot because of these stupid cannonballs. And it sucks because I really want to like this game. In fact, I like this game so much, I tried the sequel. And you know what? Yeah, it's a little better, but it's still incredibly difficult. In between the fucking mosquitoes, these little green sons of bitches, and this one boss that takes a bazillion hits. I just found it really hard to get into this game. And yeah, there's probably somebody that can speed run this without losing a life. Well, your gamer dick is way bigger than mine, boy. If you want to try this game out for yourself, it was actually released on Genesis and Super Nintendo. And it first came out on the C64. Not that you want to play that version. So it was released on a ton of systems and I thought it was an Amiga exclusive and that's why I played it and I just wasted my time. I'm very pissed right now. Now Worms is one of those games that a lot of people already know but you may not know it got its start on the Amiga. It wouldn't be until Worms Armageddon that it got super popular. But if you've never seen Worms before, it's a turn-based combat game where a team of worms try to blow up another team of worms. And you get tons of cool weapons to do it with, including airstrikes where you could carpet bomb the shit out of them worms. Worms is pretty damn fun. You ought to look into getting Worms WMD, which is the newest one. The developers have damn near every Worms game on Steam. So go buy the shit instead of fucking with this Amiga crap. Oh no, Street Fighter on the Amiga. Huh. Well, the frame rate is garbage, but otherwise it's Street Fighter, all right? Oh man, I am no good at these games. I'm the worst person to be showing this off. Shit, I know none of the moves. I'm just fucking tapping buttons. Oh, oh, I did something. I get up. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, the punch? I, I won? Holy shit! I want to at least do a Hadouken. Let's see, how you do that? How do you do that? Uh, oh, here we go. Come at me, bro. Aha, gotcha. Guys, I am not good at these games. I don't know what I'm doing. Come on, Ken. Whip my ass. I've got other games to play. Oh, who's this guy? Blanca. That's a stupid name. Of course, he probably thinks Stu is a stupid name. <laughs> I probably look like a total idiot right now. What the fuck? Are you serious? Okay, either the game is insanely easy or just all of a sudden I'm good at Street Fighter or some shit. I'm, I'm up to M. Bison. Got... Guys, am I about to beat Street Fighter on the fucking Amiga? No fucking way! Why don't you try it on one of the harder le- Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. I was thinking, hell, the Street Fighter ain't this easy. Like, I was just mashing buttons. Well, I guess I can say that I beat Street Fighter 2. I don't know how, and I probably couldn't do it again. I think that's a good place to end the video. You know, there's still a lot of Amiga games out there, some that really needed to be reviewed, but I can only do so many in one video. So if you guys like this, we'll come back to it one day, because I could literally do the rest of my career just doing Amiga games. We will not run out, but I'm out of gas for this run, so I'm gonna cut it right here. Alright, you know what to do. Like, comment, sub, blah, 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 blah. Join my Patreon if you really want to support me, and I'll send you my videos before anyone else sees them. I put your name on the board, and you can hang out in the Patron Discord. If it were any more chill, it'd be full of ice cubes. If you want just your name on the board, you can do that for one damn dollar. One damn dollar keeps my lights on and my debtors away, or else they break my arms. Don't let them break my arms. Bye.